Hello, Assalamu alaikum everyone. I sincerely hope that uh, you're all healthy and safe and uh, are taking care of each other, your loved ones, your family and friends. So, we have been asked faculty members at the Mechanical Engineering Department to um, make every effort we can to continue the learning process for the final year student and uh, continue to deliver what we can through online means uh, for final year students all the subjects uh, that are possibly uh, achievable through the online means. So as you know, I have uh, the maintenance engineering module with you and uh, since it's mostly a theoretical subject, uh, I feel we can, uh, we can learn uh, as much uh, from this online process, uh, online learning as we would in the classroom. Of course, it would not be completely um, as effective. Uh, but these are challenging times and uh, we will all have to work together and support each other and uh, learn the best we can from the resources available. So uh, we have put together the interface of Google Classroom and I'm sure you've all have been invited uh, to take part in uh, maintenance engineering module through Google Classroom. So what I see from my end on Google Classroom is something like this and I, you know, I upload all the relevant material that is of your concern uh, in order to enhance your learning process apart from the lecture series that I will mostly be recording and uploading uh, under the lecture materials. Uh, so you will find under lecture materials the slides that I use as well as the voice recording that I use uh, to explain elaborate the slides as a lecture and the reason I do that is because of course I am trying to give you the luxury to go through this lecture whenever it is convenient for you so what I would like to do in this lecture is uh, ready to recap on where we left so we you know we did few uh, lectures on uh, maintenance before the uh, coronavirus situation and the idea would be to first of all uh, gather our understanding on what we discussed before the break and make further progress from there onwards I have to admit that uh, the quality of this lecture in terms of clarity and uh, efficiency is may not be effective because you know, I have not done this before um, and uh, I am doing this obviously from my residence and uh, I can't have complete silence in the background so you may hear some background noise uh, so uh, do uh, apologize for not giving you the best quality here and of course uh, you, know, you, you have uh, the option of uh, sending me your questions uh, through email 
if you have any doubts or not clear on any of the discussion points since it's this this is not live interaction so yeah let's just get through things um, so welcome everyone and welcome to main news engineering uh, as i said uh, we all are aware these are challenging times and uh, we will now make every effort possible to adopt to this new method of learning until further notice uh, and we ought to do this by supporting each other and understanding each other uh, in the best way uh, of course we we are doing this because health and safety is most important to us and uh, we will keep that in mind and uh, until we have clear notice from the authorities that it's safe to proceed to live interaction we will of course do so but until then we will try to adopt this approach so having said that i will move on to the recap part Right, so maintenance engineering, as we picked up, and we'd all agreed that as engineers, we need to really understand what maintenance engineering really means. And we agreed so far in our previous discussion that as engineers, we design systems. Everything for us that we would ever do as engineers would be dealing with systems you know, whether it's cars rockets airplanes printers laptops you name it products for us are systems we have as engineers uh, there is no such thing as products you know, we deal with systems okay. so the idea really is in in maintenance engineering is to deal with those systems and what are we aiming for really is we maintain their functionality so you know when we when we design systems we design systems for a specific purpose that purpose is a function is fulfilled through engineering as a function for example car takes us from point a to point b that's the purpose of the car that's the function of the car So we have systems. Systems are nothing but fulfilling functions, right? They are built for a specific functionality. And through maintenance, what we are trying to do is targeting maximization of this uh, functionality. So we want to basically maximize uh, the function as such to so that it remains at its best so we are trying to maintain the, the system as such that it stays at its best, best functionality and so therefore we can target for maximum utilization of that system which can lead us to maximum profitability of this of that system and also of course in this process what we want to ensure is that we the system we deal with is worth maintaining as well so it's got to be an a system that is of worth of you know, high value right the the cost benefit of maintenance has to be balanced it has to be worth the investment to maintain that system so in essence as engineers we have systems systems have functionalities that we want to keep at its best so that we can have maximum utilization and profitability but we want to do this only on systems that prove 
are or are worthy of investing maintenance in, right? For which we need to understand the overall. We need to understand the overall uh, investment portfolio. So we need to understand the magnitude of investment. Mm -hmm. And this can only be done by figuring out for a given system what's the best way to maintain it. Right? How you maintain a car is different from how you maintain, for example, a fighter jet. And how you would want to maintain a fighter jet would be different from how you maintain, for example, a rocket. How you maintain, for example, your laptop is different from uh, how you maintain uh, your house, for example. Right? Uh, how you maintain your watch is different from you know, how you maintain your clothes. So the, the key thing here to understand is it's got to be a worthy asset. We've we got to be able to identify that system as value high value asset to start thinking about is, is maintenance worth and maintenance strategy right? so from where we left we agreed we deal with systems we deal with functionality of the system we want to keep this functionality at its best we will only do it if it proves value for that system, if it proves the investment for the system. And we will do it as such that it minimizes the cost by having the best suitable approach. So what would be the best maintenance approach that will give me maximization of utilization and profitability okay. so moving on we have this sort of horizontal view at the moment right, of maintenance engineering we deal with system that's everything for us right? as engineers we deal with systems in systems we build functionalities Everything is designed to do something. There's a purpose behind it. And that's what we're targeting. We're targeting value from maintaining that purpose. We want to sustain that purpose. We want to sustain that functionality. Every function is related to its faults. So this function corresponds to a system. That system is comprising of multiple subsystems, subsystems of subsystems. The overall functionality, therefore, is multidis multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary. A car function is take us from A to B, but it does that by fulfilling multiple functions of its subsystems, tires, brakes, fuel system, engine, chassis. All these functions of subsystems come together to support the overall functionality of the system. We want to sustain that functionality at its best by minimizing and dealing with the faults that may arise from different system, subsystem and subsystem and components of that system. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, we need to understand the overall hierarchy of the system, subsystems, subsystem, subsystem component their possible fault modes. So how many ways a tire can, for example, what can go wrong with a tire? It can get puncture, for example. It can uh, get friction and due to that friction, it can get, its surface can get degraded. It can get slippery. Um, so all those fault modes we want to think about for all these system, subsystem, subsystem components that can affect this overall functionality. Mm -hmm. By doing that, we are targeting maximum utilization. And we do this by balancing the cost and benefit. 
for addressing those faults. We make our system more reliable by addressing the faults. We make our system therefore more you know less prone to faults. If it's less prone to faults, then it will be more available, it will be more healthy. It will be available to perform the functionality when we address the faults. And by addressing the faults, what we are doing is we are building a maintainability function for the system. And we do this reliability, availability and maintainability function by using the best approach that balances all these three things. So in essence, system, the overall hierarchy of system, the functionality, the overall functionality and how it's supported by subsystem level functionality. What are all the possible faults that can go wrong with the overall hierarchy? and building a strategy to address those faults in such a manner that it provides us with higher reliability and confidence, allows our system to be available and we have a proved way of maintaining our system, a validated way of maintaining our system through a be best approach. Once we have that, we achieve at the end safety because we have addressed all the faults. We understand the system as to in how many ways it can f it can fail at subsystem and component level. So we have you know, appropriate diagnostics, for example, in place uh, and appropriate measures in place for all these possible fault modes. So therefore, I am preventing my system to lead to a situation that can compromise the safety. But at the same time, I am maximizing the performance by minimizing faults. So therefore, I can use my system for, for the purpose it's designed for, which gives me utilization and that gives me profitability as a, for example, enterprise. So minimization of maintenance costs to maximize profit. And by understanding the system failures, we increase its safety. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of horizontal outlook for the the concept the concept behind maintenance engineering. Why would I why would I even bother looking into maintenance engineering? What's, what's the ideology behind it and it's the fact that we build systems we build them for a purpose most of the systems we build are rather complex in nature they are not straightforward one system they comprise and depend on functionality of multiple subsystems they are integrated and connected and designed as such that they work together to fulfill an overall purpose function and so therefore they you know, by the very nature of uh, mechanical designs and you know, electrical components within the, the system they are prone to faults and those faults are leading to uh, system functionality failures which can affect the availability of the of the system and therefore uh, its availability and utilization okay 
So I want I want to achieve maximum safety and maximum profitability from my system. And one way to do this is by paying attention to how I can well maintain it. Now, of course, we will move on and, and break this down into objectives, principles, uh, and, you know, explore various different approaches in general that are available for maintaining different systems. So, these two slides are now available on the lecture material. Uh, you can access those uh, in your own time. Now I want to move on to a bit more detail of the background. So exploring the uh, the more of an basic principles and objectives and, and motivations behind uh, maintenance in general. So, you know, we want to understand the principal functions and practices adopted in industry uh, for successful management maintenance activities. Um, we, you know, by the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain uh, maintenance categories, what are different types of maintenance uh, and you you know you'll be able to illustrate some simple instrument used for condition monitoring in the industry. Um, you know by the end of this uh, this module you, you'll, you'll be able to understand maintenance functions you'll be able to perhaps introduce and implement maintenance functions identify maintenance functions in industries uh, and you know sort of like what would be the right way of management approach to maintenance and very clearly distinguish between different approaches available for dealing with system maintenance so you know just to recap maintenance is all about machine or an equipment uh, you know, restore its state at which it can perform required function you know, so it's, it's dealing with function maintaining that function retain the function of a machine or equipment or whatever Mostly, it's for us system. It's indeed a dedicated field of engineering. It, because we want to achieve the best way of maintaining a function, we need to optimize things. We need to you know, address the conflicting requirements between different systems. And what we are really looking for is reliability, availability, and maintainability. That's in the best way possible. So, it is of course part of art and science and philosophy. Uh, it includes human factors, which covers the philosophy part. It includes mathematics, so that's where the science comes in. It includes the art, which is really about the mindset. Of an organization you got to have firm belief in doing things the right way doing things systematically uh, that's where art and philosophy comes in and because we deal with reliability reliability is all probabilities you know. uh, availability is a function of uh, a given uh, probability right? and that's mostly related with uh, science and, and the, the very basic nature of system design is that we you know we, we solve physics and chemistry uh, in, in systems so, you know car has uh, an engine an engine has a burning 
need to burn fuel and that demands you know the composition of uh, chemical equilibriums in the combustion chamber and uh, piston designs and so on and so forth so uh, we deal with science art and philosophy in maintenance so all actions that are necessary so these actions are nothing but all the approaches that we take and feel uh, as necessary to retaining an item restoring to its serviceable condition including servicing repair so you know all these things are basically actions of maintenance repair modification overhaul inspection condition verification you know you will repair something upon for example uh, an approach of corrective maintenance so the screen my laptop screen breaks and i repair it uh, modification would be uh, i modify the properties of the screen glass as such that it is much more robust to failure overhaul is i have a complete major overhaul of the memory card the processor uh, the keyboard the screen so we have a complete overhaul inspection is where we mostly take in regular inspections cleaning the screen regularly uh, or we may be you know doing some sort of screening of uh, the screen for cracks or potential faults condition verification is more like i have some sort of uh, mean of uh, measuring the condition of the screen in real time so if any fault occurs uh, i am aware of the fault so this is more like in condition maintenance condition based maintenance um and we basically want to all we want to do is maximize the availability of the system okay because we want to be able to make the system available for its function to be utilized for its function availability do not prove any benefit for business for example you know for pia what really matters is they can utilize the aircraft having the aircraft available is of no use right however in maintenance the job of an engineer is to make the aircraft available it's up to the operations team and it's up to the the team of sales team to you know to to bring customers so that we can utilize the aircraft and make money out of it right the engineer job is to make it available okay which is why there is no utilization here you know, what we are trying to do is to maximize availability of the aircraft. of the system <clears throat> excuse me so we want to keep systems equipment in working order and that's the main role of maintenance engineer we want to keep the system in functional order there is no such thing as working right we want to use the system availability because we want to keep it functional goes back to the same point why we want to do this because we want to minimize our business risk right if i design a system i'm going to effectively sell that system to a business right like for example the boeing company they design aircrafts aircrafts are nothing but systems right they take people from one point to another point they have to sell this aircraft to a, to an airline one day 
so the air all the airline wants is to minimize their their risk to have the aircraft failed while it is parked at an airport gate with 200 people on board right airline wants their airplanes to be functional as much as they can so it minimizes the business risk right so the whole reason of doing maintenance is to minimize business risk in industries for example when you are manufacturing for example uh, you know, could be anything maybe uh, commodity products like the juices milk or cream or things like toys for kids in factories you have you know, agriculture factories the production lines is to you know maximize production capacity I don't want to have any failures in my production line because if I have a failure the production line will go down so I cannot produce as much you know, it's about building capacity as well being more productive gaining more profits and how do we support that is by configuring diagnosing repairing upgrading throughout the life cycle when you for example we start where does the life start for a system the life start for a system what well, really from the mind because you conceive an idea that's where the life starts you then convert that idea into a product or into a shape sort of thing which you you know which you draw it into a drawing and you build systems around it build a functionality around it and then you build that system wouldn't it be really nice when we build the system we know about all the ways all the possible ways it can fail so we can provide and configure and diagnose provide diagnostics for all the failures in the system but it doesn't end there because we have what we call surprises right unforeseen surprises or unscheduled or unexpected failures so we need to manage the system throughout its life cycle which is its conception its design its production its operations and then when it comes its end of life so configuring diagnosing repairing and updating the equipment the system as such that we do this sustainably throughout its life cycle remember when we defined maintenance we said maintain is to maintain or support or keep fixed nuns is about sustaining it throughout its life cycle so maintaining the equipment at its full functionality and helping productivity main the main function is maintenance and engineering attempt to maximize performance equipment efficiency prevent breakdowns minimize production loss increase reliability of the system um of course in we are what you know as engineers we are in the fourth industrial revolution okay. how maintenance used to be 20 years ago 30 years ago or even in the first industrial revolution is different from how maintenance is today right we have increased complexity 
increased automation in systems. You know, we have very sophisticated control systems in more systems. So, of course, this is a, a significant challenge for engineers today to implement uh, efficient and effective maintenance uh, strategies to better manage the functionality throughout the life cycle. We therefore need proactive efforts in exploring innovative ways of maintaining uh, modern systems. You know, one discussion, for example, is about, uh, let's say, uh, maintaining a, a, a PIA aircraft. Now, there's a very conventional way of doing maintenance on a PIA aircraft. An aircraft fault occurs, that fault is reported, and then the reported fault is diagnosed, and then diagnosed fault is repaired, and once the repair is done, it is approved and qualified, and then the aircraft is sent back, and then it comes to an availability form again. What if we want, for example, a solution where we know in advance what will go wrong with, for example, the fuel pump on the aircraft, or what will go wrong with the engine on the aircraft, or what will go wrong with the landing gear of the aircraft. We have prior knowledge, we have advanced knowledge of what will happen to the aircraft after 1,000 flying hours. So we can then plan and maintain the aircraft optimally and in a most efficient manner mm -hmm. but you know that requires thinking beyond the existing methods available uh, and thinking about how we can move to this new era of uh, maintenance uh, revolution okay. so objectives are to achieve product quality customer satisfaction if I as a, a as a aircraft manufacturer design a reliable and highly available and maintainable aircraft my airline as a customer will be satisfied right there's something called maintenance credits in the airline industry it plays a huge role in customer satisfaction like I sell an aircraft to an airline and I give them 1,000 maintenance credits, which means I am responsible for maintaining your aircraft and making it available in this time frame 1,000 1, times throughout its life cycle, which gives them high, higher confidence in, in purchasing the, the product. Maximize uh, useful life we want to maximize the utilization. Useful life is nothing but utilized life, right? That can only be done by having the system available. Uh, and I would encourage you to not use word equipment, although I have used it here, but it's more of a maximize use of life of systems. Keep systems safe and prevent from hazards by understanding the fault modes you know if we do a best maintenance strategy what are we doing we understand all the possible ways through which our system subsystems 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 components can fail and this knowledge allows us to minimize hazards and enhance safety minimize frequency and severity of interruptions so once we understand these faults maybe we are able to, once we have the full knowledge of these faults, maybe we can do something that can enhance the performance of these subsystems and components to be less prone to faults. So if a fault in the bearing occurs, let's say if, if a fault in the, in the gear box bearing occurs after 
1000 hours of operation of 60,000 RPM, what I can do is maybe I can look into the material properties of that bearing and enhance it to not be prone to crack after 1000 hours. So I can minimize the frequency at which the fault occurs. Or I can minimize the severity. So the crack length is after 1000 hours or 6000 RPM is 2 cm. Maybe I can bring it down to 1 cm by enhancing the material properties. So that's what I mean by frequency of faults and severity of faults. Right. <clears throat> because you have to keep in mind, having a crack is a fault. Right. Having a crack in the bearing is a fault. But it does not necessarily mean that the bearing will stop working. Right? A fault is not a failure. Fault severity leads to failure. Right? So for that given bearing, if the crack goes beyond 10 centimeters, for example, it will lead to cause a failure in the bearing. It will maybe lead to a rupture of the bearing, which will then create significant vibrations and make the make the system fail. The bearing will not be able to keep its balance RPM anymore, its functionality. So it, it basically leads to failure. Right? And in industries, the manufacturing industries, we are looking at maximization production capacity, high utilization, and so of the facility and so forth. You know, just to give you, you know, because I'm from, I've done some work in the aerospace industry, uh, just the commercial aviation, not thinking about military aircraft or anything, like that, just planes that passengers use. The, the maintenance, repair and overhaul industry for civil aircraft is uh, multi-billion. multi-billion dollars are spent every year on maintaining the aircraft for passenger travel. So it's a huge industry. If you think about it, the aircraft have over thousands of subsystems and all those subsystems must be maintained to fulfill the overall functionality of the aircraft. So we're dealing with a major industry for maintenance okay. and just like aviation all the other industries are significantly maintenance driven okay. thinking about for example automotive heavy maintenance all uh, industries uh, are of course maintenance um, driven think about the uh, ships and submarines you know, all maintenance driven the only industry i know of that is least maintenance effective is the satellites right you, you got to have 100 percent perfect satellite if you want the satellite to work for for example 10 years you have to make 100 percent sure on the ground before launching it that it will survive 10 years in the in in the space because you, you just cannot afford to go up in the space and repair it. That's the only one industry I know, space industry, that is different in terms of maintenance from all other industries. But the message is maintenance is a big industry. Some more figures there for you. Um, it's not just commercial, it's military as well. Wherever, wherever there are systems, there is maintenance. But the only system I'm aware of is maintenance free. When it's designed and deployed is satellite. Uh, so that's what I wanted to cover for today. And uh, 
of course you know usually in a one-to-one -one class interaction we would go into discussions and uh, we will discuss different points in more detail and explore understanding uh, which we are not able to do so here but please feel free to send me your email uh, questions in the email but of course only questions that are compelling for your understanding uh, I don't want my inbox to uh, be loaded with, uh, with, with, with trivial questions um, so that's all I want to discuss from on today, uh, from where we left, just to have a recap and uh, look into some uh, you know, basic fundamentals of maintenance engineering. So all these slides are available on, uh, on the Google, as you can see here, uh, lecture one, lecture two, uh, this is the slides, just, we, we just went through and uh, And in here, this refresher, lecture one, lecture two refresher is what I went through with you in the earlier phase of the lecture. And uh, assignments, I have put together an assignment for you, uh, which is, I want you to look at assignment ME1. Sorry. I uploaded an assignment uh, earlier on. So let me just refresh that. So There is an assignment which is uh, due on 15th of May and it's to explain the importance and purpose of maintenance engineering in general, keeping in mind you're an engineer, you design systems and uh, why would we want to do this? Explain the image below in the context of maintenance engineering. So just like I have expanded on this, I want you to uh, give me your understanding of what you think this is and explain the objectives and principles of maintenance. For assignments, the way you submit this is you write this in a Word document. You save the file as your role number and name you save the file as PDF. You email the file to your CR. And the CR will send me all the emails in a folder, all the file, all the assignments in a folder. Okay. So I don't want you to send me your, your assignment through email. I want you to send a PDF file of your assignment file to Rayur or Ibrahim. And they will forward it on to me now complete folder and they will not accept anything beyond 15th of May okay so that is all I wanted to cover I hope you uh, take advantage of this and uh, if you have any questions do let me know Inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll make further progress accordingly. So take care, stay safe, uh, have a good Ramadan, and I'll speak to you next time. Allah Hafiz.